back. It's your girl, Toya T, and this is another wind down of HBO's Insecure. This is episode two of season four, Low Key Distant. Now get your wine. And before we start off, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button because who knows when I'm going to drop this. I'm going to try to do it after the episodes. I'm going to try to drop it on Mondays. But this week was a little bit different and mainly because... I was feeling kind of uh, about this episode, but let's get into it first. Let's get a sip of wine and let's begin. Okay, so it starts off with Molly and Andrew leaving a really nice restaurant, which makes me wonder, what does Andrew do for a living? I mean, I swear, like if you've ever watched Girlfriends, the, the show Girlfriends, Molly is like a baby version of Tony Childs. And you know, when Tony was, Tony was a gold digger. And when she dated someone, you knew all the deets about them. You know exactly what they did, where they were from, how much they made. And I always feel like, like Molly's the same way. Cause she constantly has something that she picks about the, about the guys that she's dating. But for this one, for Andrew, it seemed like her main issue was that he was Asian and not anything else about him. So I'm like, okay, if nothing else about him bothers her, like his job, his education, or anything like that, what does he do? I'm surprised she hasn't mentioned what he does. And we see him go on to a phone call. He gets a phone call while they're waiting for Valet to bring Molly's car. And he seems real upset, and it seems like he lost a client or some kind of business deal went through. And I'm still sitting here thinking, like, what does he do? But I guess... That is a part of the problem. Maybe Molly doesn't even know what he does for a living because she's starting to feel like she's opening up to him and he knows a lot about her, but she but she doesn't know a lot about him. And I wonder if that also includes his job, which for me is really weird because in the day and age that we live in, and I don't know how y'all function, but the way I function, if I meet somebody and we go on a date, even if it's a quote unquote blind date, and I've only been on one quote unquote blind date where a friend hooked me up with another friend of his, right? Outside of that, I will know all your business. And even then I knew that dude's business. Like I looked him up on Facebook. Like you just give me your first name and what you do for a living or what school you go to and I'll find you, especially if I know who your friends are. So if I don't know anything else about you, but I know we have this friend in common, I'll find you. I met a guy at a club. Uh, that was a friend of a friend. All I knew was his first name. I went through my friend's friends until I found him, okay? And so that's how serious I am about my dating research, or as I like to also call it, internet stalking, but it's me using my PhD research skills for good. You know, my betterment. So I'm not ending up with some crazy-ass bum. So I'm surprised that Molly hasn't done her due diligence as a lawyer, <laughs> to look up all his information. I know, girl, you got a hookup at the DMV. You can get all of Andrew's information. Why haven't you gotten anything on him? So we see them leave from there. They have real cute banter and they're talking about, I guess they took back some cake and Andrew's like, well, I'm gonna get some of that cake. And she's like, you're not gonna get my cake. And the next thing we see, he was getting in them cakes. I was like, yes, this is why she keep an Asian bay around because Andrew can put it down. He got me with that slap at the end. I was like, yes, give it. Woo. Might need to give me an Asian bay or just Andrew. <laughs> Next, we find out that it's three months before the block party. So last time, I didn't catch the whole time frame on where we were in, in the storyline. So they say that we are three months before the block party. We see Issa and Condola. They're looking at a possible location for the block party. It's an outside venue. It seems to be, I want to say like it's La Mert Park, but I don't, I know LA, but I don't really, really know LA. But I'm assuming it's somewhere in Inglewood. So correct me if I'm wrong if Lemur Park is not an angle. <laughs> but it seems to be like in a commercial area where there's mostly like um, local businesses and Condola is just loving it. She loves the area. She's so excited. Issa's excited. You can see that they're, they've gotten over that whole hump of finding out that Condola was dating Issa's ex. And as they're talking, Issa's like, yo, I, I really, you really done a lot of great stuff for me. I want to thank you. Like, you know, I should take you out to drinks this weekend. And Condola lets her know that she's not available because she's going on a romantic uh, weekend to Ojai. And that's how, like, you know, Issa gets, she's like, oh, wait a second, Ojai. And if you don't know where Ojai is, it's, um, 
it's somewhere between LA and Santa Barbara which Santa Barbara is two hours north of LA. The only reason I know this is because I lived in Santa Barbara for a year uh, while I was in graduate school and I used to drive to LA all the time. So I used to drive by Ojai a lot. So I know it is between LA and um, it's north of LA and it's in a really nice, like, you know, mountainous beach front area. So she put two and two together and was like, okay, she's with, she's going on a weekend with Lawrence and it starts to get awkward. And then they break, you know, Issa was able to show that she's comfortable and she broke the ice and she points out like, you know, this is really important to me. Our relationship is really important. And so I want you to know, I don't have any problems. I'm over Lawrence. Like whatever you're doing is what you're doing with him. And she breaks the ice by joking about how Lawrence likes to eat his, his French fries with mayo. And I'm like, is that really weird? I mean, I don't necessarily eat mine with mayo. Like I grew up in a household that didn't really use mayo that often. My mother does not like mayo. She does not like egg products. And so, um, I never had mayo in my diet. So I really don't have a taste for it, but if it's in something like a burger or something, I'll eat it. But I just didn't see why that was so weird. So they laugh about that and we move on to the next scene. Next we're at Tiffany's house and apparently it's Halloween. <laughs> Like, okay, so we're three months before the block party and it's Halloween. So that is December, sorry, November, December, January. So the block party is supposed to happen in January. I guess that's what, that's what I'm getting, right? Since we now know that it's Halloween time, end of October. So we see Tiffany, uh, Molly, Issa, and uh, Kelly is all there trying to help Tiffany prepare for the trick-or-treaters. And Tiffany apparently is one of those houses that gives you the healthy snacks. And she's giving the kids toothbrushes. I was like, okay, Kelly was telling her, they're going to they gonna sharpen up these toothbrushes and try to stab you or, you know, throw eggs at your house because why are you giving them healthy snacks? Like, this is not the time for healthy snacks. They want healthy snacks. They can get that from their mama, not from trick-or-treating, especially since parents also like trick-or-treating too. Like, I know some of my mommy and, and daddy friends really uh, relish in eating their kids, <laughs> their kids, half of their kids' Halloween candy or their Easter candy or whenever they get candy. So we see them talking there and we, and she's filling in the girls about how like the block party's coming together. She has a event. She has a possible venue. She has half her vendors. She has a date. She has all these things like coming together. And Tiffany lets her know that they've gotten a wine company to sell um, them wine for wholesale. So she's got the liquor coming, you know, can't have an event without the liquor. <laughs> and everyone's so happy for her. And then, we see uh, Molly talking to Issa and Molly's like, oh, you know, I'm so sorry that I don't know more about what's going on with your event because I've been busy with work. And Issa's like, oh, it's cool. Like everything's all put together. I really don't need help. And we can catch up, you know, when we have dinner later this week, we'll catch up then. You can tell me about Andrew and all this other stuff. And then Molly comes back and starts complaining to the girls about how Angela's not not really being that intimate personally. So she said, she talks about how she doesn't know much about him and she she's told him like all about herself and about her family and how she used to wear headgear, you know, when she was growing up and like all this stuff. And, you know, Issa's looking at her like, it sounds like you're doing something that's not serving you. Like, are you sure that you're not looking for more than what it is? And Molly's like, no, and you know she's lying. But they pretty much are trying to tell her, like, relax. Like, if you want to learn more about him, tell him. Like, don't beat around the bush and don't play games. And so you see Molly sitting there thinking about that. Like, how am I going to get him to open up? And what I'm starting to notice is that this whole theme for this season is about not getting into things that don't serve you. And I like saying that, too. But I find that when people use that whole I'm not doing things that don't serve me kind of mentality, that they don't usually work out their issues. They're just avoiding it by saying that, like, oh, I don't do things that don't serve me instead of just confronting their issues. This is the new way of like brushing things to the side and avoiding them by saying that relationship doesn't serve me. That job doesn't serve me. That dress don't serve me. That like all kinds of things like, oh, it doesn't serve me. So I don't want to do it. So it, it seems like it's now like the new way to avoid difficult conversations and difficult situation. So I, I see how this is going to be. I think they're using it in a way to set up the major issues that are going to pop up in this season, uh, especially between Molly and Issa, because this whole like, don't do things that don't serve me. And I feel like when they get into their, their big argument, their big fight, when they 
um, have this blow up, I feel like that's going to be put in there like, you know what, girl? I don't want to deal with this relationship no more because it does not serve me. I can see it happening. Can you? <laughs> Next scene, we see Issa and TSA Bay are doing the nasty. And I mean the nasty. They getting it in. It's awkward. She said, oh, it's so awkward, but it feels so good. I was like, get it in, big man. Woo, TSA Bay. TSA Bay was getting it in. He was getting it in. He was he was giving her all that chocolate, like big, big guy love. And Heavy D, what was he, what did he call him? The oversized lover? He was giving her all that oversized love and movement. Like, okay, okay, okay. So they're getting it in. Problem, okay? Problem at the end. So they both finish. She get off, he get off. Bruh man wants to say, hey, I can't find the condom. It was on, but now it's off. So Issa is freaking out. And this was like ding, ding, ding for her. Like, time to stop fucking with TSA back. <laughs> So she goes into the bathroom looking for uh, the condom inside of her vagina, and that's where it fell out. And she's, like, having a conversation with herself through the mirror. And they're like, girl, you... This is messed up. You know this is messed up. So from there, pretty much T uh, Issa decides to cut things off with TSA Bay. We find out that he already has two kids and one on the way, so he is fertile. Okay? Fertile. And she had made a joke later on in the episode about uh, plan B was becoming her plan A and she needed to stop that. I'm like, yeah, girl, you using condoms and you still afraid that you might get pregnant by this dude because he's super fertile. He like the future of TSA. Yeah, you might want to move on. So she moves. She's moved on from TSA Bay. I was hoping that we would see more of him this season. I felt like he would be really funny. Like I was hoping he would at least stay until like episode four or something. But I guess he's gone. So bye bye to TSA Bay. Bye bye. I'll pull one out for you, but I'm not pouring wine on my floor. So sip one out for TSA Bay. TSA Bay. You can come over here. I, I I make sure to make sure that the condom fits. Okay, just make sure the condom fits. You can come over here, TSA Bay, because you. It seems like you know what you are doing. So Molly calls Andrew for a night in, and he really is interested in going to see Summer Walker instead. And all I'm thinking is like, how old are they? <laughs> Isn't Summer Walker a little bit too young for them? Like I I feel like okay maybe. Maybe I'm older than Issa and Molly. Because I know they, t like, Issa had turned 30 on the first season. So she has to be, like, how much time has gone by? Has she not, are they not in their mid-30s yet? If not, then maybe it's me. Maybe I'm aging myself. I feel like Summer Walker's music. I have, like, one of her songs. But, like, I don't know much else about her because she's not, I don't think that she is for my age group. So I'm surprised that he wanted to go to a Summer Walker concert. But whatever. Okay, so that's what he wanted to do, but Molly wanted to stay in because she wants to get to know him, and he agrees, so he's going to come over. Next we see... Next we see Lawrence is lunching with Condola, and they're laughing and joking. He's talking about my favorite show, Looking for LaToya. I was like, yes! Mm. Mm. Looking for LaToya. And they're joking about, like, how they never find Black people. Like, when Black people go missing, they never find us. And it's it's just, it's really cute. It's kind of, it's it's something that I think that I would, I would watch if it was on television. But, so they start talking about that. And somewhere in the conversation, uh, Condola mentions that, she starts joking around about how her and Issa were talking about how Lawrence likes to eat his French fries with mayo. And he's, like, really uncomfortable. He's chuckling, like, <laughs> what else did she say about me? He's like, well, she's like, not much. Like, we weren't really talking about you, which they really weren't. They weren't talking about him. They made a joke. They both know him. It's already awkward. So why not talk about something that you think is funny? So he's, for some reason, thinks it, that it's so much more serious than it really is, which makes me wonder, what is he concerned about them talking about? I mean, she said one other fact that she learned about him from Issa was that he played track in high school. But that was it. And I was like, that is like nothing. That she hasn't really told... Condola anything. And I'm wondering if he's worried that she's going to tell Condola about some of the bad things that he did in their relationship. Like when he decided to just be sitting on her couch, living off her, mooching, like not really doing anything. I really just want to know what he thinks is going to come out of Issa's mouth that would turn Condola off. So he tries to play it off like he's not bothered by it because she's starting to see like, oh, did I do something wrong by talking to her? And she... And he's like, no, 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 it's cool, it's cool. And then we find out that he wasn't cool about it because he's talking to his boys, talking to Derek and Chad, our boy Chad, problematic Chad. 
and um, they're trying to give him some advice, like, nah, that's not cool. Like, and Lawrence is trying to figure out a way to tell Issa to keep his name out her mouth, but in a nice way. And Derek is like, yeah, don't make a big deal about it because you do it and it's going to turn around on you. And Chad is kind of agreeing to, but he said, you definitely need to nip it in the bud. I find it, on a side note, very funny that they were talking about uh, Chad's size. So he was asking him, like, if he got cauliflower crust for their pizza and Lauren said no and Derek makes a joke like yo like you're looking like a real box now because he's like real like fit now and it's funny because they're making a joke obviously about how he how the actor himself has bulked up because he has a day job he's a regular cast member on the CBS show SEAL Team which is about like Navy SEALs and so obviously he has to be like he has to play the part he has to be buff he has to be cut I've never watched the show but I always see the commercials for it after I watch Survivor so I know he's on that show and I know he's a regular because he's always on the commercials so good for him for getting another day job get your checks bruh get your checks so from that from that conversation Lawrence decided that he definitely has to say something to Issa. Next, we see that Condola and Issa are meeting up and they're talking about getting Schoolboy Q as a, a headliner for the block party. Condola's not really um, familiar with his music, but Issa's like, yeah, he's dope. And like, you know, I'm going to go to the concert and I wish you can come with me. Uh, and I hope by the end of it, he'll be my schoolboy bae. And I was like, that's so cute. Molly shows up and Condola's about to leave because she knows that Issa's staying there to meet with Molly, but Issa seems to not get like the signals. So Molly comes in and she is obviously like, oh, so I didn't know Condola would be here because she obviously did not know. And she's really uncomfortable and she is not feeling Condola. I think she's jealous and I get it. Like, you know, I, I, I am very possessive and like protective over my friendship. So I get where Molly is at, but she was like being really rude. But Issa wasn't getting like the fact that Molly wanted to be alone with her and that's where I felt like this is a sign of their friendship kind of breaking down because she should have got, gained the cues that it wasn't cool to ask Condola without talking to Molly first like texting her first like hey Condola's here I think she might want to stay for lunch is it okay she has lunch with us like she should have done that instead of doing it in front of Condola because then Molly couldn't say like no I'm not cool with it because then she comes off looking like a bitch so she ends up staying and Molly is so uncomfortable and the whole time her body language is just like can this chick leave like she tried to she tried to move her out the seat she ended up sitting in the seat I think that Molly wanted to sit in which is right across from Issa so Issa is also a part of this problem I know we like to like pile on to Molly about how she is like so unaware like her self-awareness is just like out the window but Issa is also on that too which is probably why they're such good friends Next, we see Lawrence. So after he had that conversation with his boys, D Derek and Chad, he rolled up on Issa's uh, apartment. He, he called her and said, I'm outside. So she came outside to meet him at his car. And he goes into this whole, like, oh, I heard you were talking to Condola about me. And, like, you know, I would really like her to learn about me from me. And I was like, okay, that's a good way of approaching the situation. But, again, what is he worried that she's going to talk about? They made a joke about how Lawrence is not even his like his first name. Issa's like, so I shouldn't tell her that Lawrence is actually your middle name. And he's like, nah, don't tell her about Martin. Which turns out, funny, funny, his name is Martin Lawrence. Crazy. I just think that is so funny. If I knew that, I would never let it go. I would never let it go. I would call him Martin Lawrence all the time. I would be like, Martin! Every, every time I see that dude, I'll be like, Martin, Martin. I would be that annoying friend. So I get why he doesn't want to go by that. But besides that, what what are you worried that she's going to learn about you from Issa? But Issa just, like, agrees. Like, you know, he said he did it in a respectful way. So she's like, fine. I, I won't talk about you anymore with, with Condola. I won't drop any, like, you know, information about you that you don't share with her yourself. Like, we'll keep you out of the conversation. Next, Andrew comes to Molly's house for dinner. She's making gumbo badly, okay? He tastes it. He says it's extra salty. She's making sure that he knows that there ain't no nookie that's going to go on. No more getting of the cake uh, because she wants to get to know him. So she starts asking him questions. She first shows him pictures of her family and is describing it and asks him about where he grew up and about his siblings. And he makes like a comment that even though they lived close to Disneyland, 
that they didn't go there often because his sister was uncomfortable with large crowds. And Molly wants to ask, oh, why, you know, why? And he's like, well, I don't really want to talk about it. And he also mentions that he doesn't know where his sister is right now. He says he doesn't want to talk about it. And Molly then goes into how she's not interested in dating a guy that doesn't have depth. And from there, Andrew goes off. He's like, you know what? There's always something with you. Like, you're always looking for something to be mad at. And he leaves. Next, we see Issa going to the Schoolboy Q concert. She's outside in her car. And before she goes in, she calls Lawrence to ask him if she should tell Condola about what they talked about, about, you know, not discussing Lawrence um, when he's not around. And he pretty much tells her, no, it's not that serious. Don't, you don't have to tell her. I don't want to make a big deal out of it. And I'm like, this is a red freaking flag. Okay. Red flag. Lawrence, what are you hiding? What are you hiding? Why are you trying to create secrets uh, between your new girl and your ex-girl? What's going on there? <laughs> I don't know. But one thing I do know that looking for Latoya is very much about me. Okay. Okay. They changed the last name, but the story is about me, but I'm not missing. I'm right here. And I know they talking about me because they show a scene where the interviewer is talking to a white detective and the white detective incorrectly calls Latoya Toyota. And I'm like, that's what my grandfather used to call me when he couldn't remember my name. My name was so American to him that he called me Toyota because he couldn't remember my name. And he was familiar with the car Toyota, but not with the name Latoya. And so I was like, oh, that's me. And it's so funny because when they showed the missing picture, they were like, the white detective was like, oh yeah, we've been looking for Toyota. And there's a picture of a Toyota car. And it's like, oh my gosh. She's not a car. She's a person. Her name is Latoya. L-A-T-O-Y-A. A. -A. A. <laughs> we deal with issues at Molly's law firm. So this is one place where she actually is making the effort to make amends. We see her at a staff meeting and the, I, for, I, I cannot remember that black lawyer guy's name, but the one that she was supposed to work on a, a previous case on and ended up usurping that case and was appointed co-lead with him. He was talking about a case that he was doing and she obviously wanted to say something and the boss caught it was like, Molly, do you want to add something to what he's saying? She said no. So he comes and confronts her and is like, what's up? And she admits to him that she's trying to make amends for how she acted previously when they worked on that case and just she's, you know, trying not to step on his toes and trying to, you know, be a, a good co-worker. And he was like, okay, and just left. But I don't know where they're, they're going to go with that story, but... It's just, I guess they're pretty much trying to show you that Molly's life in terms of her friendships, in terms of her relationships, and in terms of her career are not all in good places. Like she is making efforts, but she's not catching on like what is the most appropriate thing to say and do in a situation. Because when you're at a staff meeting and you can help your coworker and you're saying that you want to help your coworker and you have information, because she had information that could help him. And he was mad like, oh, so you just want me to waste my time. And that's when she admitted that she wasn't trying to step on his toes. That was the point for her to be like, I did that case before when I was at my, my previous firm and this is what I did. That's not her trying to take over his case. That's her giving him help. But she doesn't seem to understand <laughs> what boundaries are and where she should step and where she should not step. And so at the end, this is the last scene. Issa and Molly take a hike in Runyon Canyon, which I am so mad that I have I did not do while I was in living in the Cali area. And with this whole quarantine, I don't know when I'm gonna be be able to do it. So I'm just like, ugh, wish I could, because it's great views of LA and they talk about it. So as they're going up there, they're talking about what's going on in their lives. And Issa here, schoolboy cute, this girl's playing schoolboy cute and she starts dancing badly. And the lady's like, is something wrong with her? <laughs> and Molly's like, no, that's, that's just, that's just her. So they start talking about what's going on. And Issa admits that, you know, they got schoolboy Q as the headliner and Molly's happy for her. Then Molly shares what happened with Andrew and how she tried to get him to open up and he ended up getting mad. And then Issa, who, this is when you know that there is some rifts in their relationship. I believe in being honest with my friends, but you also have to know how and when to speak to your friends, like how and when to tell them the truth. And Issa is making faces while Molly is talking about them. And Molly's like, what? And she's like, you know what? Sometimes I feel like you don't want to be happy. <laughs> and, and I'm like, that is not the right thing to say to Molly. 
okay? Not to Molly. You could have found a better way to say that. She said, yeah, sometimes I feel like you don't want to be happy. Aren't you tired? Because I'm tired. I'm like, ooh. Which is like telling Molly, don't talk to me about your about Andrew. Don't talk to me about your relationship issues because I'm judging you and telling you that I think that you like unhappiness, you like drama, and you don't want to be happy. And I'm tired of hearing it. And I feel like you should be tired of the drama too. And I know that I have been, not now, but when I was in my 20s, I was I was in a situation ship that was drama full for like 10 years, okay? And I had friends that had to listen to me talk about dude all the time. All the time he did something stupid, they were listening to me. And at not one point did they say to me, girl, do you not want to be happy? I feel like you don't want to be happy. Aren't you tired? Because if they had said that to me, I would have been done. That is not the right time to be saying that to your friend. Unless you don't want to be friends anymore, you don't, you definitely don't want to talk to them about anything anymore. That was just, like, it just hit me like, damn, damn. Like, really, like, that would cause, that would really cause an issue. And I can see that is another crack that got put into their relationship on top of the fact that Issa didn't realize that Molly wanted her Molly and Issa time and did not want Condola in that Molly and Issa time. You have to spend one-on-one time with your best friends. You can't have other people come in, especially when you don't spend as much time as you grow up, as you, you know, have different things going on in your life. You have to actually make quality time for your friends. And if, if it's something in the fact that like, oh, they live out of state and they're coming into town and then you want, they want a whole group together. That's one thing. But if you live in the same city, you can find time to have quality time. And you should recognize when your friend wants to talk to you alone and not with someone that they don't know. Cause like who wants to be talking about their business with someone they don't know when they don't know that person is going to be there. I think that that is showing like major cracks in their relationship. And the episode pretty much ends with that because after that Molly gets a phone call, it's Andrew. He apologizes for being rude and says like, he's not used to opening up to people. And Molly says, you know, we have time. And she's showing that she's trying to work things out with Andrew. She's trying to give him a chance to like slowly open up to her. And when Issa asked her who called her, she said, Oh, was a work thing. So she just already just lied to her because Issa just made it very clear that she doesn't want to hear anything else about Molly's relationship issues. And so it ends there with Molly looking really uncomfortable, knowing that she just lied to her friend and Issa just being completely oblivious. And they're looking over LA and I'm like, damn, where's the season going? I don't, I, I, I like drama, but I don't want it to be drama between Issa and Molly. Like I saw it coming from last season, but I just, I just, I don't like it because it makes me feel I'm really uncomfortable. I don't like seeing it because I can relate to it. And I start thinking about friends that I was really close with that I'm no longer close with that I've either fallen out with badly or just kind of just drifted apart. And so it just makes me really uncomfortable. And I don't know where it's going, but I'm about to drink the rest of this because I'm so uncomfortable. Oof. All right, guys, that's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed this recap and review. Let me know what you think about this episode. Where do you think the season is going? Did you think it was cool for Issa to say that to Molly? What do you think that Lawrence is hiding? Let me know. Leave a comment below. Share with your friends so we can get a nice group together to talk about this. And I will talk to you guys next week. I promise you I'll come back on Monday right after the episode because... Um, this is too much time in between. I had too much time to stew on and I think that's why I'm so like invested. So anyway, I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. Don't forget your wine. <laughs>